My name's Matt, welcome back to the shop, and today this is going to be a long one. Probably, I imagine. So. In number 69, he lives a transvestite. He's a man by day, but he's a woman at night. There's still this argument. Someone sent me a, a comment through Facebook saying, Dave Macaroni's saying it's pressure, you're saying it's heat. And then he said something hilarious, like, your, your arguing position is weak. <laughs> By the power of Grayskull. So. By the power of Grayskull. Um. <coughs> Heat. Right, let's do this. Let's just be very clear from the beginning that people don't seem to still understand what I say is that they say drives. Well, drives is a bit of a funny word. Um, I said turbos. Uh, heat is the source of a turbo's energy. I don't understand why people can't fucking get that. It extracts the heat energy from the flow of the exhaust system and turns it into mechanical motion. In this case, rotation. I said in that video, it's heat that powers a turbine. I understand what people, they got right arse up going, if you just heat up an impeller at a turbine wheel, it doesn't just start spinning. This is true. Now, where did the energy come from for a, turbo, for a turbine? It is heat. This is why we boil water at turbines, um, at power stations, um, but anyway. It doesn't matter. Let's uh, look at. A f Let's talk about a couple of the comments and stuff. People say expanding gas. People say this and the other. So, let's talk about where anything that your en any power that your torque, your engine produces, where that actually comes from. What happens? So you have a cylinder, a piston. We're going to go really baby this time. Really simple, like so. And then you open a valve, right? So a valve opens into your engine. It doesn't matter, it, it, obviously this isn't a, four, a two stroke, but the principles are similar. Well, really similar. So what happens is, is that, um, let's talk about forces first. So what we, we want something to happen. So when we want something to happen, and what do we want to happen? Well, we want to accelerate away into the sunset with some hot shit on the back, you know, some bitch with a G-string and all the rest of it. Um, so we want to do something and we call this work. When something is done, we call this work, right? Now, work and power is a bit of a funny one and I kind of, work is a description, it's not a thing. The reason why is because um, work is just something being done and power is how much work have you done over time? Well, because we live in a continuum of time, power is always there. Work is for an instant, and we can't have instances. Um, you know, we're not talking the, these things don't happen in like a Peter Planck second, Planck scale, or Planck time. That's the one I was thinking of. You know, basically, work is done over time, which is power. So there's always it's always power. Work is just a description, really. Um, an easy way to say that this and this and this and this. It's, it, it's a, a teaching aid to help separate one and the other. So that's generally why I don't really use the word work that often because it's, it's almost useless when we're trying to think of applying this to stuff in the real world. So what we need to do is to do work, you have to have a force, right? That is as simple as uh, when we're talking mechanical, mechanical... Um, well, mechanics, we're not talking um, electrical, stuff like that. All the work is still done with stuff like that um, in your computer processor, it's a bit blah. But we won't go into that because we're not doing that. So, um, in the mechanical instance, um, a force has to be applied, be it torque, um, be it anything, be it pressure. Pressure is, we'll get to that in a minute. Um, but... Uh, yes, so we want to we want to do some work, and we to do this we need to apply a force to something. So it could be uh, applying force to a piston, it could be undoing a bolt with torque, it could be fucking anything uh, in the mechanical realm of things. It can be just rotation, it can be whatever. Most of these forces are push forces, 
so you know you push your piston down you don't drag it back up um, you know we push valves open and then a spring actually expands but it's still pushing the opposite way to close a valve you know um, torque is a uh, force applied around a center so in a sense it is a push force it's very rare that we ever pull anything um, but what we do is we take air from outside and we do that because it has oxygen in it um, and what we do is we add a fuel so we add it's isooctane usually octane that's pretty much what gasoline slash petrol is we add them in for the single purpose of this isooctane has a lot of um, chemical energy which is excuse me is a potential energy it has energy in it so much it has an energy level let's put it that way and then with heat because we have the flat fire triangle which you should have done at school um, I think I've talked about this before you need a fuel well we've got that you need oxygen ox y gen we've got that and then you need heat basically you need to put energy in why do we need to put energy in because um, at the temperatures that we work at the pressures and temperatures that we live in fuel and oxygen will just not spontaneously combust the energy level that we have to overcome to then cause this reaction to occur which is a good thing otherwise petrol would just be constantly on fire and you'd be pouring fire into your tank you know what I mean? <laughs> it's a good thing um, but we need basically to put energy in so this heat here is just energy it's just energy going in right um, we need to add more energy to get over this threshold so we've got all these things heat comes from our spark plug with a uh, spark ignition spark plug for our SI right all is good and then what happens is, is this fuel air mixture goes into your cylinder we seal this cylinder off we then compress it now compression is a bit of a weird thing um, we have to do compression for two reasons. One, the heat source isn't enough, so we compress this mixture, and if you have a volume that gets smaller with the same um, amount of molecules inside it, uh, the pressure increases and the temperature increases, and then that gets us right close to our point where we want to ignition, and then that little spark just pushes it over the brow. Um, if you have too much compression you get detonation where the thing just you know spontaneously ah there we go as soon as it reaches that critical temperature anywhere it will just fucking basically combust and we don't have control of that and because we don't have control of that then it's quite dangerous depends what your piston is and it depends if there's multiple locations that auto ignite um or whatever so all this is good this all makes sense i'm sure we all know this what happens is, is the fuel oxidizes and then all of a sudden we get an exothermic reaction which is what we call combustion, otherwise known as fire. All is good. <coughs> this combustion and it's non-explosion, it is a burn um, and it's defined between a combustion and ignition, blah, 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 blah. it's defined between a burn and an explosion, basically just how um, quick the pressure and uh, how quick the reaction is and um, uh, so flame speed basically it also you can the way you measure that as well is also the pressure increase that's how you measure in a sense um, flame speeds and all the rest you don't have to sit there with a stopwatch watching flames travel because it's super super quick although you can do that any road so then obviously the pressure inside the cylinder increases it forces the piston down and we get a turny 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 and then we open our exhaust and get rid of all that heat because that's not what we need whatsoever that's what is according to most people no this is the problem um so what's what you know people say well surely we just have combustion because it makes gas expand well i've looked <laughs> i haven't but uh, you can look and you try and find um what expansion is can you get a bottle of expansion unfortunately no right unfortunately that's not what happens if you know anything about cosmology um 
there's this thing called inflation where the universe inflated now you go oh great the guy won a nobel prize you think fantastic the fact of the matter is one problem is is that that explains what we're seeing but there has to be a force there has to be something driving that expansion so let's talk about heat and this combustion thing why are we even doing this why don't we have cold combustion why don't we use things that ignite at lower temperatures and blah 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 so what's actually happening what is heat i keep on saying heat is energy what the fuck am i talking about um heat pushes a piston down all this kind of stuff well no it's not heat pushes a piston down it's molecules so your air that goes in is loads of little molecules of all sorts so for now we're going to go with the it's nitrogen goes around in pairs and this is 80%. We're just gonna we're gonna forget all the traces like carbon dioxide, argon, hydrogen, and all that shit. And then O2, we'll just say is our 20%. It's closer to 21, but we'll just say 20. Right easy to understand and see. And what happens is is we have a temperature scale called Kelvin. So Kelvin is a measure of what we call temperature but it's also a measure of energy so let's just say these atoms these molecules here are at zero kelvin right absolute zero kelvin what happens is they don't fucking move they don't do anything we actually can't get anything that cold and the reason why is that heat goes from hot things to cold things right so if you have a jar with atoms of just say helium liquid helium that's nearly it's like this it's just above absolute zero why can't we get it down any lower the simple fact is is the jar is in the universe and the universe has suns and petrol engines and generators and our warm bodies and the outside world and that heat will leak in because it goes from hot things to cool things and the fact of the matter is, is if you've got in this jar full of liquid helium this temperature well it's 289 kelvin outside in the office or the lab that you're working in so this heat is going to transfer this energy is going to transfer to a lower state and this is what warms it up to a sense this is kind of like um it's like being in an oven and trying your best to isolate or insulate an ice cube eventually that ice cube will melt if you keep it in the oven long enough because the heat will transfer through so um how do uh, element how do molecules and atoms how do they exp uh, you know how do they what's the word how do they express this energy well what they do is they move that's what gases do they zip around so at zero degrees Kelvin, not degrees, I know someone had a go at me for that. At zero Kelvin, atoms just don't move, right? They don't move whatsoever. But that, we've never got there, we, we will never will, unless we do something weird, futuristic Star Trek shit. Um, so I think, it's off the top of my head, uh, let's just say 200 and, it's, was it two minus, uh, Kelvin, <laughs> Kelvin is minus 273 or 78, I can't remember. Let's just say it's minus 280 degrees C. No, let's not say 80 because that's too low. Let's go a bit the other way. Let's say it's 70, All right? Let's say it's 70. So when you're riding around on your bike, even on a day like today where it's zero degrees C, that's 270 degrees Kelvin. Now I could look it up, but the numbers, you get what I mean, the numbers don't really matter that much. So our atoms have motion. Now the, uh, the um, molecules and stuff in the air now are zipping around. And every time they zip around, we can measure this as their momentum. So momentum is basically a measure of the energy you have while you are in motion. Um, and if you stop, you have to dump that momentum. We also, you know, the actual motion, we call it kinetic energy and so on and all the rest of it. Um, momentum is a good way of 
uh, including your mass in that. See, kinetic energy is just energy. It's got nothing to do with the mass. Any road. So, these molecules that are zipping around have a mass. They're tiny, but they have a mass. And every time they bump into something, we apply a force, you know, just like that. So there's oxygen atoms and nitrogen atoms going bang, 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 bang. And just say we have a box this big, and just say it's not, but let's just say this is a metre squared, you have atoms that go bang, 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 millions of times a second, because all these things are whizzing around. And every time they hit something, they do two things. They apply a force... And then they change their they change their their velocity. And every time you change your velocity, that means you have an acceleration. Now, an acceleration can be positive or negative. People like to say acceleration and deacceleration in physics and engineering. We don't generally say that. It's just an acceleration. If you change your velocity, so if you're going 100 meters per second, and then you something happens, and then you're now going 90 meters per second you have had an acceleration, that is a change in velocity. And what happens is, is that all these atoms, when they hit stuff, they apply a force to it, they um, lose a tiny bit of their momentum, and um, well, apply a force. And if you let gases um, keep on doing this, keep on applying a pressure to something, they will slowly lose heat. They'll lose heat to this surface, which means they will slow down. So they're applying a force, and because we have a force over an area, we call this a pressure. Now you've got to remember, the force is energy transferred. So this is energy transferred. Right, that's energy transferred there. Pressure is just that force distributed over an area. But basically what we're more bothered about is we're more bothered about the energy. We're more bothered about the energy that these molecules have. If you heat them up, they go faster, right? And if they go faster, when they hit, they hit in two ways. They hit with more force because they're going faster and they basically hit this and have to bounce off the other way. And that basically means an acceleration change, which means acceleration times their mass equals the force that they apply. The other thing is as well is that with gases, is that um, the faster they are going, the more impacts that they, the more impacts per second. So they're hitting backwards and forwards. If it was a cold gas, it's bang, not much force, bang, bang. But because there's more of them, you're applying more impacts to your actual surface. So let's make all this relevant. So what do we want to do? Well, what we want to do is is we have a cylinder. Oh, no, we want anything. Back in the day, the guys were just trying to work out how we could get a chemical process or anything to produce more power than a bloody horse. Horses get tired. We need a machine that can do it. We need to make the mechanical horse. We've made mechanical, well, we've started to make mechanical everything bloody else. So what we are trying to do is... Uh, basically replicate motion and eventually come out with the idea that if you push with a pushing force in a cycle and you add all these up you can turn that linear force into a rotation and away you go so what happens is is that these molecules come into your engine and some of them are massive Some of them are massive because these are your fuel molecules, uh, isooctane, uh, benzene, all sorts of stuff, uh, xylene, stuff like that, anti-knock agents and blah, blah, blah. So these molecules go in and they go in just here 20 degrees. And then what we do is we compress them. Now I said about compression before is uh, we want to raise the temperature, but not only that is we've got a cycle. We're pushing down it has to come back up again for us to push down again. The rotational motion helps with that. So it's all good. It's kind of like a chicken and egg kind of thing with, um, you know, pistons being pushed and need to be back up again to push again and rotation. It's all lovely, all works. Beautiful. Any road. So these molecules come in and they're zipping around at whatever 
rate that they're zipping around and like I said they have a mass so they have a mass and um, we compress them which heats them up because we're reducing the volume and I'll do a video all about compression and where that actual why it actually gets hot um, but we compress this mixture into a tighter space. This is a lot of it is to build because we need this cycle. But number two is it also helps with combustion, raises the temperature so we can actually combust. And it also sticks all these things in closer proximity to each other. But these are pumping losses because to compress it means you have to do work. That means there's waste heat. That's one of the reasons why you get heat in uh, compression. And then we ignite it, you see. And this is the thing. This is what it's all about. When we ignite that, there's a reaction, an exothermic chemical reaction between the oxygen and our isooctane, right? And this liberates energy, and this energy comes out in the form of heat. It is um, photons in the infrared spectrum. That's what their energy levels are. You get a little flash of light. Well, we don't want fucking light because that doesn't power anything. Uh, we get vibrations and stuff, but that's all to do with the pressure and shock waves and stuff. Again, that's um, molecular motion. So basically what happens is, is we liberate all this energy. All this energy is now available. We dump it into matter because that's the only real place, apart from light in photons, matter is the only thing that basically holds on to energy. So all your entire... Uh, intake your charge even though your um, isooctane molecules are broken apart and all this energy comes out it's still predominantly the same thing it's still mostly nitrogen oxygen and then all sorts of chemical reactions start happening and there's now we've just added some carbon from our um, isooctane and then there's hydrogen in there as well and then all these things mate up you know you get um, NOx's which are evil you get H2O because there's a hell of a lot of oxygen um, you get carbon monoxide you get carbon dioxide oh fuck you know you know and then obviously you're gonna have a few of these left over unfortunately um, some hydrocarbons basically that's all it is but all of this wasn't to make water we've got enough water it wasn't to make NOx's because we've got we, well we don't want them because they're fucking bad for the environment we don't want carbon oxide because that's bad. CO2 we also don't fucking want. And the hydrocarbons that we've got left over, we don't want that because we want it to combust them. All we wanted out of this was the release of heat. Because you have just say a um, thousand cc's uh, in just in one cylinder. And a thousand cc's is a litre and a litre of air and fuel is going to weigh, oh, how much would it weigh? That'd be, uh, no, yeah, not 0.12 grams. So that's how much mass we have. But we're dumping shitloads of energy into it. The temperature is going from, let's just use our scale, 200, uh, 270 degrees Kelvin, because we rounded up, rounded down a bit. And now we're going to boost it up to, um, well, nearly a thousand degrees. So now we've got this much. This is how hot it is in there, pretty much about. We're generalizing here massively or guesstimating here massively. But we've just increased our temperature like crazy, which means all these molecules are going fucking yeah! Like it's a fucking rave. And they've got seven and a half kilos of cocaine between six of them. They're going absolutely fucking mental. And that means every time they hit that piston, oh fucking hell, every time they hit that piston, they apply shitloads of force to it. But not only that, it's because they've got so much speed, uh, velocity, sorry, because they've got so much velocity, they're striking it more and more and more often. This is why we want to liberate that heat, because it is energy. If we did, if you took the heat out of the equation, put fuel in your engine, put air in it, compress it, but get rid of that heat, nothing would fucking happen. This is why we have spark plugs. The waste heat is actually a problem. Um, waste heat is about efficiency. So in our, in our fuel that we've just put in, we'll have a finite amount of energy. And for petrol, it's, what is it? It's 47, 
47 megajoules uh, per kilo or whatever. Well, you're not putting anywhere near that in um, because that's a kilo and you're not putting that in each, cyl <laughs> each cylinder each time. Uh, it'd only just fit in a thousand cc. But anyway, what we're doing is we, um, we've just got these molecules and through this chemical reaction, we've just give them loads of heat or loads of energy. Right, and there's a finite amount. Let's just say there's one um, kilojoule. I'm just picking anything, it doesn't matter what it is. Let's just say we've just dumped a kilojoule into all of this stuff, into all of these atoms, all of these molecules. And um, they don't expand. The atoms aren't getting bigger. The um, molecules aren't pushing each other away. They repel each other. But it's all about this energy. It's all about this jumping around. This is what pushes out a balloon. And this is why with that experiment, when I showed you that video, when you put a, bl a balloon in liquid nitrogen, the pressure just drops because the temperature drops. It means these atoms just lose their heat. They lose their heat to the liquid nitrogen because energy and heat goes from higher states to lower states, trying to get to a ground state. They're trying to get to lower states. Um, and thank God it does, because if energy didn't flow that way, we wouldn't be here whatsoever talking about anything. We wouldn't even exist. But you are dumping this amount of energy, which is in the form of heat. That's how we liberate it. That is the process. It's an exothermic reaction. And these molecules are going absolutely fucking mental. Now, just say we've got one kilojoules worth of energy that we've just dumped into that cylinder and gone bang, right? So we started at 270 Kelvin, which was our baseline for this because this is just our outside environment. It's the temperature of the air going in. We it raised up to 200, 1,270 Kelvin, which is great. But then when your exhaust gases spurt back out, they're just... just for argument's sake, let's just say it's 600 degree, uh, degrees. Let's just say it's 600 Kelvin. Well, this is bad. We want to get back to this because we started at just say 20 degrees C. We'll do it this way instead if this is easier. 20 degrees C. We went up to a thousand degrees C, and now our exhaust gases that we're shitting out are just say 400. Depends. It's not accurate. It doesn't matter. What I'm saying is, is that we've increased here by a thousand. It might as well be a thousand. But then when we're dropping back down again, we've only used, in a sense, if you want to look at it this way, 600 degrees Celsius of energy, if you want to call it that. Because it's a temperature measurement and the measurement is a t and heat is, a t is basically energy. When you touch something that's hot, Hot isn't anything, that's just how your body perceives it. That's just how our brains perceive the world. Just like looking and seeing the colour orange, and orange actually isn't anything. It is just an energy level um, in, a spectrum, in the spectrum of light. You know, you've got certain energy levels, you have certain colours. Orange actually isn't things, and you couldn't have a tub of orange. Um, orange juice you could, but yeah, I know that joke's coming. But, <laughs> um, but basically, what's going on? Well we're shitting out we've used about 600 degrees in this entire process but we're shitting out 400 and that's the waste heat this is why these systems are inefficient this is why engines 30 between 30 and 40 percent if you're lucky this is why that mercedes thing i keep on saying it about someone put a link in thank you um the 50 percent efficient thermal efficiency and energy recovery systems trying to extract more energy out of that trying to extract more energy out of your exhaust gases and that is the whole point you've got to remember that i know i'm not denying pressure doesn't push a turbine around either it's actually just the force see that's the thing it's actually again it's the momentum and that's this is where it comes back to so let's look at our turbine blade all right let's just imagine it's like a fucking decent board wiper god's sake it's it's when it gets fucking cold, <laughs> this board and the pens, the, the ink dries out and well, whatever, I don't know. Uh, something to do with heat. <laughs> Let's look at our turbine blade. And we might as well just use a, um, a jet engine turbine blade 
there's no reason to just because it's easier to draw um, the same process is all what's happening so when you've got a turbo molecules of air are whizzing along like ball sacks and they are striking this surface bang bang little targets right they are striking this surface and because they are then diverted so they go ding and ricochet off they lose some of their momentum it's a, mem a conservation of momentum they have to transfer it which is a force they're applying a force they're accelerating which means slowing down they're changing their velocity we'll say deacceleration just for simplicity they're banging off ricocheting off so they've slowed down and it parts a force onto this blade in the opposite direction to which they ricocheted off so if the molecule hits it and ricochets that way the blade will turn the other way and what you do is it's all these impacts so where do the where does this come from if we say we'll call that a centimeter squared just one an area so we count up all of these impacts and how much their force uh, how much force is applied due to this momentum transfer and then when we say oh well that's so much force uh, per the area which is our centimeter squared which is just a spatial um, uh, a, a spatial, spatial coordinates that's the word I'm looking for so your force times your acceleration gives you a pressure right awesome but it's the force that does it not the area the area doesn't do anything so it's not a pressure that pushes it around it's just so easy to think this way and this all sounds like it's been all super geeky and pedantic but there's a reason why you have to be super picky and pedantic this is how we design these stuff we have to learn the fundamentals otherwise we can't make changes or we're just guessing we'll just randomly put custard in it dave and see what happens you know what i mean it would just be like that so this force is applied by the velocity of this times its mass right that's basically where this force comes from uh, no the, and then the force is the um equals the mass times its acceleration right so the change in speed but this these molecules have a mass and they have a velocity all right so the mass is just saying kgs or grams or whatever that's constant that's fixed so we can't do anything with that we know that our area is not pushing anything so we've got to get rid of that so we know that our pressure is not pushing anything which is a loose term i know people are not going to like that but this is just how you link back everything so we've got a force and then here we've got a mass so we can't change that we've got a velocity our force is our mass times acceleration well we can't change our thingy it's our acceleration so our acceleration here at the interface is where work is done this is where work is done right but we've got our velocity so where does our velocity come from where does this velocity of this accelerated gas uh, uh, molecule come from is it the fact that the piston pushes it up no bollocks no <laughs> now people are going to say it's the pressure differential the pressure inside the cylinder is a lot higher than the outside yes but why do atoms even why do molecules even do that does you know does a molecule listen out of a fucking hell there's lack of pressure over there <laughs> no what happens is it's a chaotic system it's like billiard balls and you give them a good whack they bounce around and try and fill all the spaces and if there was no friction they would eventually pretty much actually hit every single surface and in a sense that's what gases do so um they are bouncing around in a box so if you had a box like this with a divider in it and you had all these atoms bouncing around like this if we were then if we could instant del instantly delete this wall it's only because they're bouncing around that they bounce into this new space here and because they uh, are now twice the volume just say then the impacts are reduced by half which means that basically your pressure the force that you record at the interface would be lower that's all it is pressure is just a rec it's just a recording device it's just saying there are this many impacts applying this much force over this amount of area it gives you a good idea because 
this means if you you know if you put something in the press with a point it's going to have a apply a lot more force at that tip because due to distribution of surface area than it is something massive you know what I mean so it's not that pressure is useless it's just that when you look back the one thing that we've got here is velocity right and where does this velocity come from this velocity comes from energy that is dumped into these molecules where does that come from that comes from the exothermic reaction when we combust stuff if you put fuel and air into a cylinder and don't have the combustion fucking nothing happens it's the combustion bit that's important this is why they're known as combustion engines or heat engines Combustion engines for the everyday person because it just uses combustion versus like an electronic electric uh, 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 eh, an, uh, um, an electric motor. That's just for the, all the simpletons and all this. This is why we call it combustion. What is combustion? It's an exothermic reaction. What does a reaction mean? It means something happens chemically between molecules and atoms. What does exothermic mean? Exo as in exterior, as in out giving in a sense, chucking out. I can't remember what exo means exactly. There is a direct translation. Probably Google it, you'll find out. Um, and thermal, exothermic, thermal, heat, energy, booyah, all done. We want to change this velocity, and this is why it's important to understand the source of a turbine's power, its energy, the source of a turbine's energy. How it does all this spinning comes from the velocity of this gas. We can try and dump more, we, can, we can't make the molecules heavy, we can try and dump more in, but then there's pumping losses and all the things associated with that as well. And we would have to pump it in, and that's what the, the, that's why we're even doing this in the first place. But, it is the velocity, it is the velocity, it is the energy that these molecules have. If you put more heat, if you, put, if you heat up gases, they will, the, each individual molecule has a higher velocity. We measure this whole thing up as a pressure. Um, just for sim just for sim simple simplicity. Now, pressure doesn't mean that pressure's useless. Pressure has its other um, uh, its other applications with stuff like hydraulics and all the rest of it. And in engines, it has its application. It is a good measuring tool, but it's the velocity of these molecules. You've got to forget everything else. It's atoms and molecules of a gas as a vapor. What you're sticking in your engine. What happens to them, they basically fucking, you set fire to them, right? <laughs> you don't set fire to them. There's a combustion event, which means that all this heat is released. Heat is what we want. Why do we have cooling systems then? Because there's a problem with heating stuff. Just like um, you have a solid, if you, make, if you apply heat to it, these atoms come so excited until they break free from each other. When they break free from each other, they become a liquid. If you heat them even more, they'll break, they'll basically have so much energy and so much velocity that they can defeat gravity and fuck off and into the air, or they are the air. Or they can become airborne. Um, and this is a problem because we want heat, but the problem is, is that all the things, the box that you contain all of this um, combustion process thing going on is also made out of atoms and they absorb the heat and if you're not careful they'll fucking want to shake so much and increase their oscillations and all this until they break apart it's called a piston melting and it's fucking horrible you see what I mean so uh, heat isn't the enemy heat is what we want it just has drawbacks because what it does to gases it also does to fucking everything else it's just energy and matter and that is the problem where people say oh heat is just something we want to fucking get rid of well if that was the case we'd use liquid nitrogen in our engines to make drag bikes or formula one or motor gp surely we'd just chill our engines down to absolute fucking as cold as we could get if heat was just the enemy heat isn't the enemy heat is what we want that's why we call them heat engines there's probably a few fuck ups in this because i'm just trying to do all this off the top of my head and um try and create a story that you can understand hope this makes sense hope i make sense and i'll see you in a bit